Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video we'll study about the conversion of epoch to human readable date. Okay, so what is epoch? Epoch time is the time. If we go to the epochconverter.com and browse here to the section what is epoch time, it states that it states that the Unix epoch or Unix time POSIX time or UNIX timestamp is the number of seconds that have elapsed since January 1, 1970. Okay, so January 1, 1970 is taken as the reference time. From there on, the elapsed number of seconds is counted as the epoch time. Okay, not counting leap seconds, which is mentioned here. Literally speaking, the epoch time is UNIX time, but epoch is often used as a synonym for UNIX time. Then there are some issues also which are mentioned here that if it is signed in as 32-bit integer it might cause problem on this date okay in the future date and the converter here used in the epoch converter page is that it will convert to seconds for the 10-digit epoch time 13 digit at milliseconds and for 16 digit microseconds. So in our example, we'll take the 10 digit epoch time. Okay. So in this video, we'll convert the epoch time to human readable date. Okay. So the time will look like if we go at the top of this page, convert epoch to human readable date and vice versa. So here you can see that the current Unix epoch time is this. Okay. If we talk about today's date, it is this and it is continuously increasing. So if you see here, this is the number timestamp to human date. If we click here, it will give us the time okay, and the date. So here we could change the value. Let's say I'm giving it something else and it will again give me the date. Okay. So in this video, we'll take some sample epoch time in the form of input data and we'll convert it into human readable date. Okay, so let's go to the data factory and here inside the container we have test input folder and the test employee input subfolder and we have the file here present as epoch input.csv if we try to edit it and preview the data so here we have a column epoch time and has few epoch time values present here okay in the column so we'll try to import this column as source in the data flow activity of adf and then try to convert this using the expressions in the derived column transformation of the adf and then we'll use expressions in the derived column transformation of the adf to achieve the desired result of converting the epoch time to human readable date so let's quickly go to the data factory here and create the pipeline new pipeline epoch conversion okay epoch conversion to human readable date we are doing and we'll take the data flow activity since we have to perform the operation on the data which is present inside this epoch time column we'll use the data flow activity right so we'll take the data flow so we'll go to the settings of the data flow click on plus new and name it as data flow epoch conversion and then add the source in the data flow so the source here will be the epoch input.csv file so we'll go back here and we'll click on add source go to the source settings the first tab and to the data set so we have to connect to the data set, click on plus new. The data resides inside the storage and two account. So we'll select Azure Data Lake Storage and two, click continue. Then we'll select the delimited text, which is CSV. We'll write here epoch input. Link service we already have for the storage and two account. We'll browse to the file parts. The file resides inside the test input folder or the container inside the test employee input folder with the name as epoch input.csv so we'll select that we'll click ok first row has header and import schema would be none we'll click ok right so we have 
I have the data set selected here. We have the data set ready. We'll go to the data preview section. And since the data flow debug option is already enabled, we can click on refresh to preview the data. Yeah, so the data appeared here, epoch time column with the values. Okay, and we'll go to the projection tab here and we'll try to import the projection too. So click on import projection. Importing is in progress so that we could see the type, the data type coming for this column. Okay. So the data type is integer. Okay. The values here are of up to 10 digits only. Okay. 10 digits or less than that. We'll go back and now we'll add the next transformation where we'll write the logic of conversion of epoch time to human readable date which will be the derive column transformation. This derive column transformation is already demonstrated in one of the videos of the data flow transformations playlist, which you can go through if you're not aware of the derive column transformation. And we'll go here in the derive column settings, the very first tab and try to create the new column. Okay, so in the input, we have epoch time column. We want to have a human readable date format, right? Human readable date column. So here we'll click on the column. Okay, we'll select first the epoch time column. Okay, as is. And here in the expression builder, we'll click on the expression builder and we'll select epoch time as is. Why? Because here we want the first column to be epoch time and the second column the converted column okay so we'll click save and finish now we'll click on plus add add column and we'll name this column and here we'll rename this column one as date okay date call okay which is the converted column and we'll open the expression builder here and we'll try to convert this epoch time so how we'll convert it and here if we click on under the expression values, this search button, if we try to search for the function two timestamp, we'll get this function two timestamp. If we hover over this function on the right side, you can read that it converts a string to a timestamp given an optional timestamp format and the other details. Okay, the other details is how we write this function. Okay, the examples are also given at the bottom. That is two timestamp, then the value and how we want the value to appear. Okay. So we'll click on this function two timestamp, right? When after selecting two timestamp, we can see here, if you hover that it accepts total four parameters. For us, we'll take the string and the timestamp format. So the string will be epoch time. That is the incoming column. So we'll select epoch time, then comma. The next one is the timestamp format. We want the format to be BYYYY MMDD. Okay. This looks fine. Now we'll click on, now we'll click on refresh and see up to this level what is the output. Okay. So in the output, we can see that all dates are coming as. 1970 and the month January with different dates, right? We are not getting the proper date. And as we read in the documentation here for the epoch time that the reference time is taken as January 1, 1970. Okay. So here we need to convert this epoch time to seconds. Okay. So here the function is seconds. And if we hover over second, it says Duration in milliseconds for the number of seconds. Okay, so seconds will convert it to milliseconds. And epoch time here will close it in braces. Now this expression looks fine. Now we'll click again on refresh. And after here converting the epoch time using the seconds function, Okay, the duration in milliseconds for the number of seconds, we get the desired result. We can see here that the first epoch time, it, it has given the result as 16523, then 22, 21, 23, 1970, 
another data okay so let's take one of the data from here let's say we take this value okay epoch time value and go to the converter here and right here or paste here the value we are getting may 16 21 right if you go back here we can see here 16 may 21 that means this expression is giving us the correct value of the date right let's take this time this value okay and we'll go here again in the converter we'll place this value and it gives us may 16 96 so it gives us 16 5 96 right it has given us the proper time now we'll click on save and finish okay and we'll go to the data preview section to preview the data Yeah. So here we have the epoch time and the converted date. Next, we want to learn this output into the database. Okay. So we'll connect the sync, the output of the derived column transformation to sync. So we'll click on plus new Azure SQL database. We want to land the table. So we'll select Azure SQL database to land it into a table. The database is CK SQL DB. Here we'll select that and we'll create a new table. We'll name the schema and table name inside the DBO schema. We want it to be talk output. Okay. We'll click OK and we'll go to the settings of the sync. Here the table action is required. That is to recreate the table. The table will get dropped and recreated. Required if creating a table dy dynamically. So we'll try to recreate the table in our case. And here also we'll click on preview data. So the data appeared here properly. Now we'll publish the changes. Publishing is happening. We'll go to the pipeline. And validate the pipeline. Pipeline is validated. We'll perform a debug run. Let's click on debug. Publishing also completed. And here we could see that the data flow is in progress. So finally, it succeeded after one minute, seven seconds. We'll go to the database. Here we are inside the CK SQL DB and we'll look for the table epoch output epoch output and click on run we could see the epoch time and the converted epoch that is the human readable date okay loaded into the sql database table so this is how we could quickly convert the epoch time to human readable date using the derived column transformation of the mapping data flow activity in adf okay with the use of function to timestamp and seconds hope you have understood the video thank you for watching do let me know in comments if you have any queries happy learning bye